Peter Pepper picked the pick up. Peter Pepper picked the pick of pickled peppers. The Peter Pepper picked the pickled peppers. How many? I don't even remember how the saying goes. Uh, Sally, so what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of my Uncharted Nathan Drake cosplay series. Today's episode is a lot longer than I expected it to be, so that's why it's in its own episode. It was supposed to be included in my last video, which is why I got confused with how with how many episodes I have left. But in today's episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how I made the pick for my Nathan Drake. Cosplay. So this is a pick Nathan Drake finds near the end of the game. It's attached to some skeleton's boot while he was trying to climb the side of a cliff. It's one of the saddest deaths actually because he basically just probably starved or dehydrated to death. But of course Nathan Drake just looks past that. He knows he's dead. You know he probably wouldn't mind anymore. So he just grabs that pick that's holding him up, takes it off, the skeleton plummets down to the ground and then the skeleton dies. <laughs> But now Nathan Drake has a tool that he could use to climb cliff sides as long as it has a really specific texture on it. And now he can maneuver way more than he could before. So originally I was planning to make this pick out of real metal. So this is the front half of a pickaxe that, a very old pickaxe that we used to have. Well, we, I still have it, it's right here in my hands, but I just, you know, remove the other half of it. The original plan was to basically heat this up um, hot enough to where I would be able to form it, then I was going to drill a hole through there, and then I was going to add the, the loop. Uh, the process seemed to be way more difficult, and then I realized this is probably going to be way too heavy on the side of my belt. Um, I decided as a cosplayer, this is probably not going to be the most comfortable thing. So I ditched that idea. I think I, I, think I will be including a link somewhere for the video of me trying to do this. Uh, but like I said, I didn't do it, so it's not a, so it's not its own video. But it was a really interesting adventure that I had to go through. Even before I was gonna make this, I was planning on making it out of wood. But uh, something I realized was it's probably gonna break, especially if I was gonna attach the loop somehow. The loop is the ring that goes around it. I just call it the loop because it, I don't know, it's more natural to me. So I thought. If I was going to attach it one way or another, the wood probably would have broken at some point. So that idea was ditched as well. Then I decided 3D printing is probably the best way to go with this. So I quickly made a model uh, more or less of what the pick in the game is. And something I decided to do was make this pick free for the public. There should be a link in the description to my Thingiverse uh, profile where you could download the STL files of the pick if you want to make it yourself. In the video, I'm gonna show you a little bit of the process of me actually 3D printing because there's a little something in there that you kind of need to do. I have my loop here. So now, we're, now I see, I'm guessing that that's big enough for this to rest in there. All right, it's pausing. Just gonna set this inside. Uh, uh, just set this inside. That should be good. So now I'm just gonna resume. Here it goes, so you can see it. Continue the print and hopefully, yep, just went straight over the loop. So now what it's gonna do is just gonna print right over that and then the loop is pretty much going to be permanently stuck there so that's how i did that so here is a 3d printed piece a final 3d printed piece that i made you can see the loop is in there and the loop is one solid piece you can see there there are some harsh edges i didn't really mind that because i'm sanding it down anyway so i could just take that off with my rotary tool so in the video i'm gonna be showing you guys how i modify this to look like how it is in the game so i hope you guys enjoy and follow along if you want to like i said the link to the stl files will be in the description so that's it i hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video and i hope you follow along and i hope you enjoy I hope you enjoy. Um, you can see this is a pretty good size. You can see with my bag that I got from like Linda. It fits in here just like the way it does in the game. If I were to have made it thicker, I don't think it would have fit. So all that's left is to sand it smooth and make it look like it's been attacked by the elements. Make it all uh, look rusty. Maybe some corrosion from just being out in the rain for all that time. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. But first, just sanding it smooth. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put a layer of Bondo uh, all-purpose putty uh, all over this just to 
get rid of any unwanted uh, layer lines and all these uh, unfortunate like like this like so this this is where the support goes there's the support right here it's what it came off of all this stuff it's gonna come out in the paint and i don't want that so i'm gonna go ahead and use this it's a putty you put it on it hardens and then you sand it down and it's really smooth so i'm gonna go ahead and do that right now Um, I think that's good enough. I, 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 I put way too much. Might as well just put some on here, even though I sanded it down perfectly. Yeah, so now wait, <laughs> gosh, I put way too much. But now just wait uh, about 15 minutes or so for this all to dry. So now you can see it's all sanded and smooth except for the ring part. It kind of looks good. Like you can see here on the actual pick, there's some spots that are, there's some spots like right there that are, that go deep in. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that like that because what I'm gonna do is add just a little more Bondo in certain areas. With the Bondo, that's gonna give me the rust effect that I'm looking for. Just sort of like mess with it so that it becomes pretty rough. That way I'll be able to make it look like rest later on okay so i might have gotten a little bit ahead of myself um because what i want to do now is add some of the greater like little uh messed up features part of it so like you see in the one in the game there are some parts where like pieces are just broken off like gashes in this piece so what i'm gonna do is go with my my dremel with this cutting wheel and i'm gonna add some scratch some like deep scratches i'm gonna go ahead and do that right now on um, this and it's a little, a little bit on the the little loop the little ring so So some spots like that, and I could go ahead and get a file and sort of clean it up a bit. I think that's pretty good for now. So now what I'm gonna do is, you can see on mine, I didn't do 100% infill. So I'm gonna have to fill that in, but I think I could do that with uh, the paint, with uh, some acrylic paint, instead of going back with uh, my Bondo. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over this with some Rub and Buff. This is Rub and Buff. Uh, basically, it's just like, it's from what I, from what I get, it's, it's a wax. Or it actually says wax right there but so i have this piece of paper folded so it's a little thick and the rubber and buff won't bleed through like it did here i'm just gonna put a little bit here yeah so about this much so i'm just gonna use this you could use whatever you could use whatever as long as it you know works properly but just grab some that's actually a lot <laughs> put some put some back and then just go over this whole thing with it now it's gonna look weird because it's like rough and bumpy. There's just one layer that I'm putting down. Of course, I'm gonna add some uh, paint to look like rust. The pick in the game is orange. So I'm gonna have to strategically paint it orange. And then there's some blacks there too and just other nasty stuff. But as of now, this is gonna be the first thing I do. I'm not, I'm not worried about getting into the, the scratches because I kind of want them to stay dark. The tip of the tip of the the tip of the pick is pretty uh dark in the game so i don't need to put a whole bunch i, I don't have to put a whole bunch of any of this like barely any of there's been there's barely any of this metallic finish that's going uh that's in the pick in the game it's mostly just the the orange and 
add a little bit more. It's mostly just the orange and blacks that come through in it. So that's why I'm not too worried about how this is right now. That should be good. So this is pretty much like already ready to use. But as you can see, my glove, I just rub a little bit. So it comes off easy. So with rub and buff, something that you really gotta do is use a clear coat just so that like, like right now, it, it doesn't come off on your hands when you're handling it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with this. Uh, it doesn't have to be matte, but it's just the one that I'm gonna use because this is the one I have. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into further Okay, so now I'm gonna start painting this uh, similar to how it looks in the game. So there's a lot of uh, oranges, blacks, and the, s I just dropped something, the silvers. The silvers um, later on we'll go back over with the rub and buff, but for now we're gonna have to paint everything else. So here I have a bunch of uh, acrylic paints that I had over the years. Okay, here's a good orange. It's a, uh, you can see it's orange, no specific like Granny Smith apple green, you know, just it's just orange. You have a black here. And I think that's pretty much it. Now I have some like disposable little paint brushes that I'm gonna use. And this is my palette. This, this paper towel, oops. First, I'm gonna go ahead with the, the orange. In these reference photos I have here, it seems like it's silver orange and then black on top of it that's pretty much how i'm gonna have to go uh, in the end i am gonna go over a little bit a little bit more with the rub and buff right now we're doing the orange so the first so with the orange i see i noticed that it's in the middle of the pick not on the edges the edges are reserved for more for more uh the silver and black but there but some but some orange does kind of bleed through. I'm almost gonna dry brush this. So get get some on your on your paintbrush, dab a little, and then sort of put it where you think necessary. I'm trying not to get it into into the scratches uh, because that wouldn't be realistic. The paint won't just go into where the scratches are. So I'm trying to avoid that as I paint into the scratches. About the bottom two fifths of the pick, there's a lot less orange. It's mostly like on my reference photo on the side here, just a little bit. And then it's mostly like the black and rust. So I got the rough detail. It's it's very bright right now. Um, it will dull down once I add uh, the same dirt effect I did with the others. But now I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead clean the brush and do my blacks. Okay, so now that I finished painting where the blacks and oranges are gonna be on the pick, I decided I'm gonna add some rust to this. So this is what I'm gonna be using for the rust effect. There's a primer, the iron, which is in paint form, and then the what the spray that actually makes it into rust. So you can see right here on the back, I've already did a little bit of testing to see how the effects would go, and I think it's good. I just went a little bit too much, uh, which is fine. I mean, it's not gonna be uniform all the way around. So. But what I've realized is the primer is pretty much like the main uh, color. It's just to give it a base. It's powdered iron that's in here. You use this and you put it in places where you think it needs it. And then you spray it with this. It was just gonna give, which is gonna make the iron uh, rust like the way it is here. So what I'm gonna be doing is on the places where I put the Bondo, so that it's really rough. I'm only gonna put it in that in those places. So here's the primer. You don't need a lot. I'm just gonna set this places where I think it needs it. It's always good to do a practice like I did here and I actually did it. 
It's always good to do a practice on a separate piece, like I did on the back, but that's because I was okay if it was too much or whatever, but then you get an idea of how the product works, and, th and then you know how generous you have to be with the product. So I know now that I don't need to put too much for this piece. With this in the game, it's not really that bad. So I'm only putting it in certain parts. Now something I probably would have done differently is I would have made the the Bondo parts a little more rough. But another another way you could do that is actually with the dirt technique where I put I put dirt in a cup, put some glue in there and then put it on here. You could do that same exact thing with sand and I think it'll give it a uh, a uh, similar effect. I'm sure there's videos about that out there right now. I'm just put in my rust. Now on the box, it says pretty clearly allow half an hour between coats and I should do t about two coats of the primer. So I'm gonna do, go ahead and do that, leave it for 30 minutes and then do a second coat. You don't have to see that because I'm because uh, you just saw me do the first coat. But, uh, but after that, I'm gonna go ahead and do the next step. Okay, so I put two coats, I waited 30 minutes for it to dry. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add the iron, which is the metal. Pour a little bit, cause I don't need that much. It's good to shake it as well to get all the particles around. And so something I realized with this, so something I realized with this is that it doesn't really matter how much of uh, this iron you put on it. Cause you can see here, I did a little test and here on this side, I barely put any. And on this side, I put like a good amount and it looks virtually the same. I thought I thought maybe if I put more, it'll like add up, but nah. And with this one, you're also gonna have to do, uh, wait 30 minutes, add a second coat, and then wait 30 minutes for it to dry. And then you could move on to the final step. So that's what's gonna happen right now. And now it's time to spray it with the rust. So something I think happens with the rust is with here. There, I didn't put any of the paint here, like in the middle, but it still turned a little bit darker and browner, which is okay. You know, it's better than this bright fluorescent orange. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're doing a separate project. Right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and do about two coats of this spray. It's gonna activate the, the iron and turn it into rust. So now you can see the rust effect taking on and i did it on, i did it on places where it was really rough like this spot right here so um so something i did realize though in about two days it is going to get like a little uh it's going to do a little more of an effect i realized that this didn't just happen in a day so keep that in mind but what i'm going to do now is i have some i have a little bit more rub and buff here and i'm just going to put it on the edges and try to get some like off the edge just so it's a little more random just so not everything is uniformed and then some more just so that give the effect that the paint is kind of wearing off in some areas some on the outer edge of the loop because I figured there will be a little more friction going on there I know it's a ring, but I call it loop. So now I'm I pretty much done. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go over it with a with a clear gloss. Then I'll be done with this. I'll be done with this piece. So now I'm done with everything I need for the Nathan Drake cosplay. The only things that are left is Nathan Drake's journal, um, his haircut, and the special effects makeup, it's like some scratches that he has, and some dirt to make it look like I've been running through a freaking island that just that just rained so everything's wet so i'm gonna have a lot of dirt all over me so that's pretty much it i i hope but here are some close-ups of the pick after a few more days i'm actually really happy with the way it turned out i think it was a vital piece that i needed since the costume that i'm making is pretty much right after he gets to this. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want, you could follow me on Instagram. That's where I'm at. I do have a Twitter and a Facebook. I don't go on it, but if you message me on there, I will see it. These will be available on my Etsy store along with my grappling hook, which 
hopefully after this entire time i finally put up the next video i make should be a spider-man noir cosplay video i know a lot of you guys have been waiting for that so here's a little sneak peek of it i had to go through a lot of designs and just to make it uh useful uh until then hope you guys enjoyed leave a like subscribe and leave a comment with anything you think I can improve on with my future videos, or just if you have any questions about what I just did in this video. So another thing I wanna ask is to please share my channel with anyone you think would be interested. I'm trying to grow, trying to be, trying to be a YouTuber. Um, so I hope that that continues and that I'll be able to make more videos for a longer period of time and hopefully not such a large gap in between the videos. So. With that being said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like, leave a comment, and everything I can prove with future videos. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of whatever I do. Goodbye.